All right, beautiful people, welcome back to another amazing and impactful episode of the True All Forever podcast, where we try to live our best life through the lens of holistic health. <laughs> I'm your host, Devon Travell, creator of Black Wall Street, the board game. Shout out to these hey, t-shirts hey, we rock hey, today. Yeah. Ha, ha. Um, and of course, as usual, I have with me the beautiful, ooh, the smiley, the Black Wall Street shirt wearing the ring shining the healthy dancing queen herself. Talk to the people, please. So party people, my name is Sinclair, mm-hmm. AKA B. B. Elder. Okay. And uh, yes, here on a, on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. We switch the day sometimes. No, but we, <laughs> dan- we dancing it around, <laughs> keeping it. Do, do <laughs> <we get? laughs> but uh, Sunday afternoon, if it's still considered afternoon. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, excited to be here. I'm, I'm back. Yeah. You know, took a little break from the podcast, aka schedules didn't work out, mm-hmm. but I'm back. Yes, you are. I know y'all missed me. Yes, they did. I missed y'all. Oh, oh. Um, and I want to do a quick, I got a few things before we get into week updates. I know we like to get into that, so you can go first on that. But a few things. One, my humble and deepest apology to the folks that were listening to the podcast last week on the actual listening platforms. And I know there is a little bit of audio issues there. It has been fixed. It has been updated. It looks beautiful now. So you all can go back. And that wasn't, it wasn't last week. It was actually for the fashion episode, which was a great episode. Definitely go back and listen to that now that the audio is back. So my, my apologies for that, but we're back and we're going good. Back and we're better. Yeah, yeah. Much better. <laughs> much better. Um, second, huge shout out as usual to our amazing video production squad. Shout out to Jair and the team who's behind the scenes, you know, doing the editing, making sure we got new music, making sure our transitions are good. So huge shout out to them. Uh, definitely if you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, leave a comment. But yes, shout out to Jair and the uh, production team. Much appreciated. So passing it off to the queen updates for the week, how they go, what's the vibes feeling like? Talk to the people. Talk to the people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, vibes are good. I feel like um, I don't know. I feel like I was entering a like not a slump, but like a almost slump, which mm-hmm. is like a, what uh, was what was behind that slump, or what what put you in a slump? I don't. I don't know like what specifically, but one I can say coming back from any sort of vacation. So mm. we, we were in Greedo last weekend celebrating Nana's seventy fifth birthday. Shout out, shout yes. out. And there were people on the, the YouTube channel that uh said happy birthday to Nana last hey, week. So hey, oh, yes, yeah, I'll, I'll pass the message along. Um but yeah, I thought like coming back from any sort of trip where you get to get away and you know, I feel like it was a good space to just get your mind off things. We had mm-hmm. fun little game nights. We didn't necessarily go out and explore too much, you know, mm-hmm. COVID. But we had a nice little family game night, so it was nice to just get your mind off of, you know, everything for a second. Mm-hmm. And then when we get your mind back on everything, it's always a slump. I feel like the week after vacation is always hard. Mm-hmm. It's it's always hard. It's like, I'm back here? Yeah, yeah right, right. Yeah. Back to reality. Yeah. Um, so I thought that had a very big part. Uh, of, of the reason for the slumpiness. Mm. Um, but I feel like towards the end of the week, I'm like, all right, we, we back on it. We, I feel like I'm revitalized a little bit. I'm mm. um, ready to come hard next week. Oh, hard. We grind it. Yeah. We also had a really good potluck community meeting this yeah. morning, uh, which I think is pouring into your cup, uh, probably mm-hmm. pouring into my cosophagus. So there's some good energy there, too. Yep. Yeah. I'm like, let's go. Yeah. 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 Um, so my week was pretty good. Uh, if you haven't seen on Instagram, we got a shout out and a post from the We Buy Black community. Uh, so we got a lot of new followers and energy and folks reaching out is interested in the game, which is always dope, uh, which is why this week we have the shirts on because, you know, that's where the energy, that's where the vibes are this week. So if y'all haven't gotten in already, go to playblackwallstreet.com. You can get yourself a board game, Tulsa's history of Black Wall Street and teaching financial literacy to families worldwide. Much love. We appreciate the support. And shout out to the folks in Germany, in Canada, in the UK, in Finland. You know, the, the love is going across the world. And yeah. we appreciate it. Like, Finland, Germany. Oh, okay. Shout <laughs> out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but the episode this week. So we've been 
going holistic for the past two weeks. You know, last week we talked about uh, the five questions to ask your elders. Go back. That was that was a pretty good one. The one before that was fashion brands and seeing how brands and fashion really play a role in how we feel about ourselves and our own kind of self-love or self-appreciation. Uh, but this week, we're back talking specifically about health now. All right, we're zooming in a little bit. Talking about health. Queen, can you let the folks know what we're talking about today? So health is broad. We're talking about physical health mm -hmm. and specifically the effect that eating brains um, has on your health. So brains meaning breads, pastas, all that delicious fun stuff. Yes, it is. They are delicious. They are delicious, but unfortunately, our bodies don't always agree mm. um, that they are the better, the best thing for us to be eating on a regular basis. So, are, are we diving in now? We are not diving okay. in now. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, she's she got it. She come on now. You know we have to say the patented line, and I'll you can say the line this time. Oh, that, yeah, I forgot we didn't. You want to say the line? No, you got it. Okay, so without further ado, <laughs> let's get into the episode. <laughs> Like the queen said, we're talking about grains, the effects they have on your body, hopefully talking about some good grains or mm -hmm. grain substitutes y'all can work with. But I'm going to pass it off to the queen to go ahead and get us started. Yeah. Health and herbs. So when you're talking about grains and um, what most people think of, what I first think of are, yeah, like I said, breads, rice, pastas. Like Chips. Kind of, yeah chips, your snacks, mm -hmm. these all fall well into the, the category of grains um, in terms of how they're um, metabolized in your body. And so kind of the first thing I wanted to touch on is how it actually is affecting your body um, so that you know what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, so first off, if you have ever heard of the itis or, mm -hmm. you know, yep, yep experience uh, I, I the victim. itis, <laughs> yes, experience the itis, it's uh, you know, kind of getting into what grains do. Uh, grains and not only grains, but like refined sugars, refined carbs. Um, so basically, when you're when you eat these grains, um, your body turns them into glucose, right? Mm -hmm. Your body because glucose is what you use to en for, to energize yourself. It's the your gas. Body. It's the gas. Um, so your body is converting it to glucose. There are some grains that are more quickly converted into glucose which you might think is a good thing, but it's actually not. Huh. Um, so when, you're, when your body quickly, when you eat something and your body is like, ooh, thanks. Mm. It's like, it's like, it's like think, <laughs> think about like a child that you give a soda to or some candy to and they are off, right? Mm. They get that sugar rush and they are off. Why is that not necessarily a good thing? Because they're going to have a crash later, which I know sometimes sometimes parents use that as a tool. Right, like, right I'm going to let them burn out all that energy so that they crash later and I can get some work done later. Mm -hmm. um, but for health-wise, it's actually not good. You, you never really want to have a crash like that. That's not good. Um, so what happens when you're eating these types of highly processed and refined, refined grains is your body is eating that. And just like a child with a soda, they are take, it's taken off. Mm -hmm. It's like... It converts it to sh sugar right away, um, so that's why you get the increase in your blood sugar the spikes. I see, like blood, blood sugar spikes. Mm -hmm. That's what the sp that's what it means by spiking. It's taking it and it's very quickly converting it into glucose, which isn't good because then you get a crash later. Mm -hmm. um, with the more healthier, complex, um, less refined grains, which means they're more they're closer to its natural state, and you kind of. You've probably heard this, you know, uh, heard this theme in multiple of these podcasts. Generally, things that are closer to their natural state and how they are created in the earth, how the earth intended it to be, are going to be better for us and are going to be metabolized in a uh, and make the nutrients more bioavailable. And all that means is that uh, if you eat a, a, let's say you take a vitamin C supplement, and it has however many milligrams of vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Your body is not actually able to access all 100% of that vitamin C mm. because it's, I mean, and this is a whole other topic that I, don't, I won't get into, but if it's if it's made from a, like if you're talking about like a little high C, <laughs> or, 
little high C chewy gummy, that's synthetic. It's not actually made from oranges. It's made in the lab. Um, whereas if you get an orange, um, that's, you know, and you eat an orange, that's much more bio of bio available mm. vitamin C because it's natural. It's from something that your body can actually use. I find that interesting and I'll, I'll interject really quickly because y'all know you're on, you're on a path, you're on, you're on the road. But I find it interesting because I think some folks, including myself, I used to take like my daily vitamins and mm-hmm. I think, oh, I'm getting 100% of my vitamin C, 100% vitamin E. I'm getting 100% of all these things. Right. I'm good. I can right. eat junk food for the rest of the day because I got my nutrients. Right. So you're telling me that's false. Look, don't, 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 don't shoot the messenger. But I'm telling you that, yeah, a little, a little uh, tablet that's made in a lab is not nearly going to give you... Mm the same uh, results as eating the fresh fruits and vegetables or eat, or a derivative of mm. the fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, but yeah, most of one, the, I'm going to echo my, my health mentor, Sean Stevenson. Shout out Sean Stevenson. What's up? Man? Shout, shout out. Um, but uh, the supplement industry is not as regulated as you may think it is mm. um, because they're not considered drugs. Um, so they don't necessarily have to follow the same guidelines as like, pharmaceutical companies when they're creating these. Um, so that's something to keep in mind when you're buying your supplements. Mm. Um, but yes, as I was saying, so there are some grains and some um, carbs, complex carbs that are burned a lot slower in your body. Um, so if you would think about, I, I try to uh, metaphors, you know, trying to come up with comparisons. Mm. So if you think about, um, uh-huh. <laughs> I, really, I really had something and I lost it. <laughs> but basically just something that burns a lot slower. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Long story short, rather than having a spike in your blood sugar, you're going to see a more sustained, like if you were to draw it on a graph, like instead of going like, shoop, shoop, right? This is a super big spike and then a crash. Mm. You're going to see a more like slow burn of whatever the carb is. Um, and that is good. That's what your body, you want to be able to sustain, right? When you eat mm. something, you should have energy for a few hours. It should sustain you, not only your hunger, but you should actually have energy to do what you need to do for a few hours. Mm. Whereas if you, if, can you imagine like Thanksgiving, like we don't eat meat on a regular I'm basis, but on Thanksgiving, <laughs> You knocked out. Could you imagine if that was every meal? Like how unproductive you would be as a person if after every meal you needed to go take a nap. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, right? It's 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 okay to indulge every now and then, but even just for your own, like what you're trying to get done. If you had to go, if you got if you're getting tired every day after after every meal, there's probably something like that's not supposed to happen. I feel like we normalize it a lot, especially in the black community with the, the itis. Mm. You just think that's just a normal thing. Mm. Um, you don't necessarily think that, that this isn't supposed to happen. Um, but it, it's actually not, right? After you eat, and if you have ever done any type of like cleanse or just really clean eating, you notice the difference. Like night and day between a Thanksgiving meal and like uh, some of the recipes that I'll go over at the end of this podcast. Mm. You feel good. I'm like, shoot, I, I, just, ate, I just ate dinner, but I'm, I'm ready to go run a mile. Like, what's up? Um, so it's a, it's a very big difference from when you eat something that makes you want to sleep. Mm. So if you've never tried it, try it. Like if, if you're like salad, that's not for me. Like just give it a try. Mm. Just give it a try. Like eating clean for like a day and just see how it feels. You definitely notice a difference. Um, so yeah, that's in a nutshell. That is kind of how the, the grains affect your body and why you want to go with either. I don't like to say avoid anything because the minute you say avoid something that's what your mind wants Mm -hmm. um so you i would say limit or reduce uh you know be conscious of the amount of refined carbs that you are consuming so that you can have sustained energy number one um but two you can also avoid things like diabetes um because again the that that the spikes up and down in your blood sugar and your glucose levels Mm -hmm. those are things that have that that force your body to react to that Right, your body has to react whenever things happen, whenever things happen in your body. So when you get a spike, your body's gonna react. When you have a dip, your body's gonna react. So the insulin levels are the one thing, are one of those things, especially with glucose levels that are going to react as a result to whatever your glucose levels are. Mm -hmm. So your insulin levels are gonna rise and fall and rise and fall, that's not good for you. You wanna have a relatively sustained, you know, level of insulin and glucose in your body. 
Boom. There it is. A warm welcome back. The health nerd back to the podcast. Yes. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> oh, so a few major takeaways is one, the itis is not normal. And if you feel that, definitely make sure you double check your diet. And I would here's the sad thing. The itis is normal. It shouldn't be. Mm, deep. So and that's what I, I feel like Another thing we need to be careful of is saying something like normal mm -hmm. in terms of meaning good or bad. Mm -hmm. um, because what we consider normal in society doesn't necessarily mean that it's good or bad. Right. Um, because it is whatever happens in society is a result of just culture changes, of different shifts, of no fat, low fat, no carbs, like all these different shifts. That's a result of. Lord knows, a whole bunch of different things, but um, money, yeah, marketing, <laughs> yeah. Not, not health is what I'm trying right. to say. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, another takeaway is that although supplements may say you get 100%, your body may not actually absorb all that 100%. So try to go raw, natural nutrients as often as you can. And on that point is if you. Um, like let's say you're anemic and you know you're 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 deficient on your iron, but you're taking iron supplements. That's the perfect example of your body telling you whatever supplements you're taking, mm. it's not it's not it's not actually grasping it. It's not actually able to use it. So rather than you know continuing to take it or take some some additional medication, just try switching up your source of iron. Maybe it will be become more bioavailable to you. Mm. Um, Moringa. And Moringa. Ashwagandha. Ashwagandha. So, <laughs> so like superfood concentrate powders are a, a what I prefer to take over a multivitamin because it is closer to, again, the actual source. It is basically Moringa, Ashwagandha, Kale, uh, all these things um, that are just light, gently dried and then turned into a powder. So you're still getting the full form and it's actually even more powerful. You don't have to eat as much of it because it's concentrated sure. um but it's you're not actually they're not taking out any extracting any part of it what the supplements are usually doing is like let's say you have an orange i'm gonna take all the vitamin c out of the orange and then i'm gonna give it to you sure. but your body may need all the other things that are in the orange to actually get a hold of that vitamin c mm -hmm. um so that's why it's not necessarily good to just extract something out of um a fruit or a vegetable it's best to just eat it in its whole form if you if you can so look into some superfood powders uh you know they're not sponsoring us or anything although no, I but if you got a plug for organifi what's popping we give y'all a ton of money <laughs> yeah we do we, we got like four tubs four tubs and the to-go packs in our in our cabinet so that's our go-to real quick all i'm gonna say is i haven't gotten sick not going wood while no while taking organic on a daily basis. Boom. All right, we're going to now transition over to grains that you should definitely add in to your regimen. All right, so Sinclair, the health nerd, can you please tell the amazing folks a few grains that they can use to supplement or substitute out the quote unquote bad ones. All right, what are some power grains and good grains? Talk to me. So I'll kind of go in a hierarchy of what is probably easiest to do, but less impactful down to like most impactful, but will probably require more changes in your diet. Gotcha. Okay. So first off is uh, white versus whole grain, whole wheat. Um, it, that's a very easy switch that if you are not doing right now, um, switching from white, white bread, white rice, white pasta um, to whole grain is an easy switch. And I say that is the least impactful because if you're looking on the, the glycemic index, GI, all that means is how much your blood sugar rises um, when you eat something. So when I was talking about the spikes versus the slow, the slow, uh, the slow burn, um, things that are high on the GI scale, they spike. They give you spikes versus things that are lower on the GI scale and they got that slow burn. They're going to give you sustained energy. Mm -hmm. um, so anything white, so white rice, white bread, white pasta is going to spike. Um, if you can switch over to whole grain, uh, whole wheat, um, those are going to be a little bit lower on the GI scale, but probably still spiking. Um, so that's why I say like that's 
I, I don't necessarily believe in making drastic changes all at once. Mm. So if this is the first time you're hearing this information, start with that. Mm. Start with just switching from white to wheat. Um, because there is, a, there is a, a ever so slightly taste difference. There is a color difference. Um, but that is a very easy thing to do because usually anything that's offered um, in the, the super refined or white version has another, has brown rice, um, whole wheat pasta, whole wheat bread, whole grain bread, all that good stuff. Um, so I would say that's number one. Well, easy, easy switch. Easy white switch. rice, brown rice. Right. right. Um, and so the reason really quickly is that when we're talking about, right, we're talking about, again, extracting things out. When you're looking at a seed, you know, for any type of, for wheat or whatever, a wheatgrass seed. Um, uh, they, Who looks at seeds, first of all? What? Who's out? If you're on this podcast and you look at seeds, <laughs> so let us know in the comments. Like, mm, that wheat seed. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Long story short, white bread, they are taking like just the middle part of that seed. And that's what they're refining down. Mm. Um, it's mostly starchy. There, A lot of the nutrients are on the outside part, the outside parts of the seed. And that's what they're taking out. They're like, we don't need this. We're just taking the inside part. Mm. It doesn't make it nice, white and fluffy and soft, but it's not nearly as good for you. Um, and all of the other versions, they keep some of that outer casing on the seed. They keep some of that in there um, so that it's a little bit more nutritious for you. Mm. And then when, we, when you go a step further to whole grain or to even like things like the, the like the best I'll mention is like barley, things like that, like those are, and like sprouted bread, those are taking the whole seed and not extracting anything out of it. Whatever they're doing to it, they're doing it from the whole seed. Um, and so it allows it to, again, it has more amino acids, it's got more protein, more vitamins and nutrients that your body can use. Um, so it's, that's why, that's why it's a little bit better for you because yes, you'll still have the spike, but you're getting a little bit more nutrients. So it's like, it's a little bit help, a little bit more helpful than just something mm -hmm. that has little nutritional value and it's spiking your, your glucose levels. Gotcha. And it's interesting to say, when you look at whole grain bread or multi-grain bread, you see usually there's seeds right. on it or there's little oats on it. Whereas yeah. when you're looking at white bread, it's just the bread. Right. So I think, man, I, I never really put those two together. I was like, oh, they're just putting seeds on it. Right. But bread comes from seeds. Interesting. Don't say you never learned nothing <laughs> from our podcast, y'all. Same thing with the white, white versus brown rice. Mm -hmm. White rice is they take off the, the brown casing that has all the good protein in it. And they're like, we don't need that. We just want the white part in the middle. Um, yeah. Interesting. All right. Up next, number two, what's the next step? Kind of getting a little bit harder, but also a little bit healthier. Talk to me. Yeah. So I would say after that, and it, it, after that, it kind of gets like, I don't necessarily want to say one's better than the other, but it gets just a little bit more difficult after that, I would say. Mm. Um, but there are things like pseudo grains, um, which are technically not grains, although in society we treat them as grains. Mm. Um, so things like quinoa. Um, quinoa is quinoa's actually a seed. Um, it's not a grain, but we usually replace it for things like rice. Um, that's usually what it's replaced with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, things like quinoa. Um, I'm forgetting what else, so I'm going to look at my notes. There's a difference between a grain and a seed. You know, to be honest with y'all, I learn alongside y'all. You know, <laughs> she is the physical health and nutrition health expert i focus in on that economic and you know social health so as as y'all are learning i'm also learning um so the other two the reason i forgot them is because i haven't actually had any of these other two that i'm going to name um but amaranth is one of them and buckwheat is another one um and so i did read that buckwheat is kind of like a, a <laughs> if you want to like cream of wheat like i used to love cream mm, of wheat grits yeah. are cool i'm not gonna lie i'm not getting a lot of hate grits are cool but i always prefer cream of wheat um, so it's like a, a cream of, have you ever had cream of wheat with the evaporated milk in it? I have not. Fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm maybe your health person probably, but hey, shout out to Grandy that I used to be on the, on the river. Cream of wheat, some nice butter, some sugar, so, some evaporated milk with a side of toast. Mm -hmm. Was it wheat? It wasn't. It wasn't. Oh, man. <laughs> but, it wasn't, but it was so good for the soul. That's for the soul. Counts. There you go. Um, but yeah, so buckwheat is apparently like a good substitute for like cream of wheat or mm -hmm. probably grits. Um, so I would say that that's the next level is like the pseudo grains. Um, and kind of, oh, and barley. Barley is, is a grain mm -hmm. um, and it's probably one of the best grains. Um, it's similar to rice. 
um but it's like the grains are a little bit bigger it's usually more colorful like they maybe you may see some mixture mixtures of white and black and like some of the colors in the barley is that like when we see like the wild rice is that barley? kind no it's not the same thing um but it's it's a similar a similar it's more similar to barley than it is to rice gotcha. i would say it's kind of like wild rice um which by the way wild rice is also a healthier version of rice um <laughs> that you could go with um, and what is rice pilaf? Please, please educate me on that. Is, that. is that rice? Is that wheat rice? Is that barley? We have no idea. I, right? I don't know. That's homework. It's good. But, uh, it is good. So I was wondering. I don't know. You really don't know. Um, oh, 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 oh. And then, sorry, before I get to the last one, is um, I would say right after the like whole wheat, going to like whole wheat, whole grains, Right under that would be, especially for like pastas, they have a lot of plant-based pastas now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm not talking about veggie pastas, but they are plant-based pastas, meaning pastas that are formed out of chickpeas. Uh, I saw black bean spaghetti. Um, lentils. Lentil, lentil pasta. We've had some lentil pasta, some very good, good lentil pasta yeah, from cool. Costco. Um, and edamame. I've even seen some edamame that noodles. Was good too. Yeah. So those are all going to... Uh, digest a little bit better and metabolize a little bit better in your body than straight white pasta or or even probably whole wheat pasta um but yes the next step which i kind of alluded to already mm -hmm. is what, what we've been doing a lot of which is just honestly substituting grains altogether for vegetables oh, yeah. um yeah so things like rice personally i've never been a huge rice person i'm more of a noodle person i love myself some some noodles and pastas i love rice jt you know your mom's <laughs> fried uh fried rice with bacon and eggs in it used to be so fire back in high school oh does that sound good sinclair fried rice is another thing Ooh. white rice i've never been really into mm. um or brown rice it's whatever so honestly we pretty much completely substituted our rice in our diet with cauliflower rice um, so that is nothing special aside from chopped up cauliflower into little bite-sized pieces. Um, and then you cook it and it, it, re it does resemble rice. So the idea, a lot of these healthy switches is the idea that you are trying, your brain is a very interesting thing, right? Mm. You're just trying to get it to as close to what you are used to <laughs> as possible. And you got to use your imagination a little bit. Mm. Um, so for me, cauliflower rice is close enough for me. Um, you know, if you are a rice connoisseur and you just love, like, for a Kathleen, it may not be the same, because I know... Oh, Kathleen's about her rice. Oh, she's got chicken and rice. That is, like, that is her life. Um, so, like, for someone like that, it might be a little bit harder. Um, but if, if you're not a big rice person, make that easy switch. It's a quick win, as I like to call it. If, if you're not big on it, substitute it. And... So I, I got a few things. Mm -hmm. Okay, first, first of all, y'all know again I'm not the health person, but we did the the health switch mm -hmm. to the cauliflower rice. Easy, right? Especially since one, you can go to Viarca, you can go to Ralph's, and there's literally a frozen bag yeah. of cauliflower rice. So that's that's how we first tried it out. Now the queen makes it fresh, and she actually does like Spanish cauliflower rice and adds different stuff. So you know you know how she does. She got fancy. But we first started off with just a bag of frozen mm -hmm. cauliflower rice, and most most of the time when you're eating rice with something, unless it's fried rice, the flavor is coming from the chicken or right. from the shrimp or from the salmon. So as long as you flavor that correctly or when you purchase something that's flavored correctly, it's still going to be a nice meal. And texture-wise, it still feels like you're eating rice. So right. yeah, easy, easy switch. For me, like I know that's the last one, but that, yeah, that was easy. I feel like for most people, that would be hard. But yes, I agree that it's... And that's why it's like, pick... I like to just give options because pick whatever you think is going to be the easiest for you mm -hmm. that was a very easy switch like he said um i have tried mexican or spanish uh spanish cauliflower rice um but i've seen i've seen recipes i haven't tried it yet for fried rice so it's like you can pretty mm -hmm. much do whatever you would do with normal rice mm -hmm. um right um so that's gonna be that's on the menu right? yeah we're gonna try it gonna <laughs> know it's on the menu. <laughs> um but the other thing is right i told you i'm a noodle person um i have only a few times I've ventured into it, um, but there are like zucchini noodles and um, butternut squash noodles um, and different types of, I think I've even seen like sweet potato noodles. Um, so those are, those are good options for substitute, like literally substituting a grain for a vegetable. Mm -hmm. um, so I've made like a zucchini shrimp scampi. Um, that's a, a recipe that, that I, um, that I want to try pretty soon here. Okay. We'll see if I approve. 
Um, but yeah, so, <laughs> you know, give it a try. Try some spaghetti and switch out the noodles one day for zucchini. And again, if you are not big on noodles, make the switch. You won't notice, especially, if, I mean, I'm not huge on spaghetti, but if you eat like spaghetti how I used to when I was a kid and it's all covered in meat, you're not going to notice a difference anyways. Right. Um, so yeah, that's another easy switch is, you know, ditch the grains altogether and substitute it for some vegetables or lentils or beans, pretty much whatever you would put, you know, rice or, or, uh, pasta on, um, you can, you can substitute that, that out for another, uh, either legume or, um, vegetable. Legume. Sounds fancy. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've gotten the five, four, I don't know how many layers it was, but the suggestions, uh, do you want to recap those quickly or do you want to move on to the next part? Um, sure. So switch from white to wheat. I would say that's like the easiest thing that you could do if you're starting out. Um, there are also the plant-based pastas. Um, try those out. So the edamame noodles, the chickpea noodles, the lentil noodles. Um, there are the better for you grains and pseudo grains. Um, so those are the barley. Those are the really good green for you. The buckwheat. Buckwheat. And I didn't even, I didn't even get to get into spout, sprouted bread. Um, you, you see how emotional it was just, oh, I didn't even get to, I, know. I, I wanted so I bad. I talked about rice and pasta really quick. I'm sorry. I, I want to talk about sprouted bread because mm -hmm. it's very fascinating to me. And I haven't yet tried it, but I want to. Um, there's, they have it at follow the, the store right there. So <laughs> um, sprouted bread is basically when I'm talking about the seed, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than extracting anything from the seed, um, you actually let the seed sprout. So you let it start to germinate. Right? Mm -hmm. And that allows the nutrients to become a little bit more bioavailable. Mm -hmm. And then you make the bread from there. But it's with a seed that is already sprouted. That is supposedly the best bread for you. Um, it does still have gluten. So if you are if you suffer from celiacs, don't try it. Um, but if you are if you're big on bread and but you're trying to find a healthier option, right? Whole grain, uh, uh that's good, that's good for you. But if you're trying to go with the best of the best. I would go with some like Ezekiel sprouted bread. Um, again, I wish I could say from experience that I that I really love it. I, I'm speaking it into existence that I'm going to love it when I try it, but I haven't tried it yet. So cool. if so, you have, let me know. So this week we're gonna try some Super Saiyan bread. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's now transition to the final and probably the most fun segment of the podcast recipes. Mm, yeah. <laughs> All right, Queen. So, you know, these are some recipes that I know we've tried personally, but I think you may have some some new ones on here. But talk to us about the recipes and even the kind of the, the thought process behind maybe what you took out and what you replaced with a new Super Saiyan grain. There you go. Um, so I like to, again, try to think of like, what are things that you can create as close to what you actually like to eat? Like, I don't say what you actually like to eat. I these meals have been bombed. Yeah. Um, as close to what you were used to eating as possible. Um, so it's easy to take something that's already not very high in carbs and just substitute the little bit of refined carb that you do have with something that's healthier. Um, or yeah, something that just doesn't have a lot of carbs in it at all. So soups, soups are a good, are, are an easy way to, to go ahead and do that because usually there's not a lot of carbs in soups unless you have like noodles in it. Or garlic bread. Or garlic bread uh. with the soup. Um, but again, you may get some Ezekiel bread. Ooh. Ezekiel garlic bread. Okay, we'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the list. Let's try it. Um, so, for example, chili. That is one of the things where I'm like, aside from eating cornbread with the chili, there's not a whole lot of carbs involved in chili. Um, so, and I've said, not carbs, refined carbs. Um, there's lots of vegetables which are carbs. Um, so normally I make a quinoa chili, um, the best like, you like quinoa chili. That I do. Um, normally I make a quinoa chili, but I was like, okay, if I even wanted to take off the quinoa, um, how can we make this still a filling chili? Honestly, beans are what makes chili filling, in my opinion. Beans, if you've ever had anything high in, in, in beans, you know that it, it fills you up. Mm -hmm. um, so I made a chili with some onions and peppers, um, some chickpeas, some lentils, and I actually put salmon in it, made a salmon chili. I know that sounds weird, it's bomb. Mm -hmm. um, because I matched it with, uh, 
I don't want to butcher the, the way I'm saying this. I'll say it. Babir. 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 may be wrong. It is a, an Ethiopian chili uh, chili powder. Um, so instead of using regular chili powder, I wanted to use the Berbier Berbier season. I can't even say it. Berbier seasoning um, because I have had. We love Ethiopian food, oh, and there so is much. a dish, um, salmon tibs. I think is what it's called. at the one we like, um, and it's basically salmon with some uh, tomatoes and peppers and the uh, Berbier seasoning. So I'm like, oh, let me, let, do, let me do a play off of that. And we usually get it with lentils that also have the Berbier seasoning. So I'm like, if these all taste good together, you could put them into one dish and they'd probably taste delicious. Factual. <laughs> Factual. Cosign. <laughs> um, so uh, onions, peppers, chickpeas, lentils. Um, I We broke up salmon into little pieces. Um, and then I think I even put cauliflower in it. Sweet potato. Yeah, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so put all of that um, with some tomato sauce, uh, some veggie broth, some coconut milk, and a lot of Berbier seasoning. I actually made my own little uh, chili powder seasoning with Berbier and some onion and garlic powder and other, other fun stuff. Paprika. Um, but yeah, it was it had a, had a little kick to it, you know. It did. It was a little spicy, uh, but it was very good. And again, you eat, we ate that by itself, so there's not a it, good carbs only, basically within that. And the good thing about the chili, or if you do a soup, it is a amazing meal prep meal to have yes. because chili you can freeze it, put it in the refrigerator, and it's an easy grab and go if you still go to work or if you're just at home. It's an easy grab and go in microwave. So yep. go go ahead and do that. All right, we got four more. Respectfully, Queen, you know, if you go into the amount of details that you did for this uh, oh, beer, beer, chili, sure. we're going to be here until you know, right. 8, 8.30. So, right, 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 right. So. Okay, so the next thing I made was a stir fry. That is something that you've made, yes. I don't know if it was the next thing, but I made a stir fry, <laughs> um, basically with vegetables. I used shrimp. You can use whatever protein you want and served it over cauliflower rice. Boom. All right. Um, I also made a taco bowl. Um, that's when that's when I experimented with the Spanish cauliflower rice. So just a little, put a little bit of tomato sauce and uh, cumin um, and some other spices, um, and then made a little like chipotle, like basically like if you go to Chipotle and get a bowl, basically made that and substituted the rice for cauliflower rice. And substituted the lettuce for power greens like spinach. Oh yes, yes, you can do that. Lettuce is also fine, but if you want something with more nutrients in it. Um, some spinach or some power green spring mix, something with darker darker green colors are, are, are good for you. Um, cabbage would also be good. Cabbage or purple cabbage would be mm. great. Um, there was another one that was really good. The lettuce wrap. Thank you. I'm like, what did you do? That was, that was the most Arguably recent. the best. Arguably. It felt the healthiest because it was just lettuce wrap with some shrimp and yeah, fire. Go ahead and break it, it down. Was, it was fire and you know, honestly the simplest one of all the of all yeah. the recipes um so i was inspired from pf chang's i love pf chang's lettuce wraps shout out pf chang's um, and so we made them with shrimp um so i did onions some water chestnuts um zucchini cabbage peanuts. peanuts and some other things i don't remember um chopped them up real small with some shrimp uh and made my own peanut butter sauce um, with peanut butter, soy sauce, sesame oil, all that good stuff. Got some butter lettuce, put it in there, and yeah, it was fire. It was fire. Ryan, Ryan was over here when we had it. Ryan, y'all, y'all, let, 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 let us know. <laughs> was it fire? And I think he, he said it was fire because he, he, he wanted more. Yes, so. he did. He asked for more. We um, almost fought for it. There was only a little bit of love. <laughs> this <laughs> man <laughs> is the person. <laughs> Look, Ryan, if you're wondering why I was sitting there quietly, because this man is the person. We fast. So we only eat one meal a day or and drink a smoothie. And some days we don't even drink the smoothie because we just are busy. Um, but so we have one meal a day. And you heard me mention the lettuce wraps. Like it's lettuce wraps. And this man comes over after already having eaten with his family and then offers offers some of the lettuce wraps. I would be like, da, da, da. Listen, the, the way I was raised, if someone comes over your house and you're eating, it's it's almost mandatory to at least offer. 
Now, to be honest, Ryan, I was expecting you to say no, to be 100%. You had already eaten. I did ask you before you came. And you said yes. So I was like, all right. He said yes. So I gave up some of my lettuce wraps, and he was able to eat some lettuce wraps. But yeah, I was still hungry that night. But I, I would do it. I would do it again. And, and here's the thing. So y'all don't think oh, I'm goodness. the enemy. Oh, it's because I asked go. him beforehand, is Ryan coming over during dinner time? Should I make him some lettuce wraps? He said no, he already ate. So you imagine my face when we're sitting on the couch and he's like, what, you want some lettuce wraps? I was like, sir, I only made enough for us too because you said he already ate. Listen, this is another segment. What are the rules? What are the rules? What are, what are the rules? So go ahead on either this on, on YouTube, go ahead and leave a comment on what the rules are. Or if you're following us on Instagram, true health, the number four ever. If someone comes over your house, no, 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 you should e irregardless, it. irregardless, irregardless, irregardless. <laughs> that's not even a no, word. No, no, no. Ir irregardless is the word. No. <clears throat> if someone comes over your house and you are eating, is the rule that you must offer them food, or if someone's coming over while you are eating and you ask them. Do you want something? And they say no. Do I then have to still offer you some when you come over? There you go. Let us know what the rules are. How I was raised and what Grandy will probably say is, yes, if they're at their house, you're eating, always offer food, always offer something to drink. That's just the Southern hospitality in me. Um, what were we talking about with girls? I don't know. Lettuce wraps. Thank you. We're good, yes. <sighs> So you see how good the food was? The food was so good, we talking about it like two and a half, three weeks later on the podcast with such emotion and passion. Uh, it was fire though. Some other really quick examples um, of things that I haven't tried yet that I want to are the um, shrimp scampi with zucchini noodle, noodles. Ooh, yes, let's see. Okay, well, which one of these are we gonna try this week? I looked yes. for this week, but it either isn't available listen, or can't be played right now. Listen. Google, if you don't mind your business, technology. <laughs> Shout out to True Up Forever Podcast. Y'all never know what's going to happen on here. You never know what we're going to talk about, but you always know we're going to talk about something else, something that's going to be beneficial for your life and impactful for your loved ones every single time with a sprinkle of surprise on there as well. You're asking the incisive person a question on the spot on a podcast. We'll discuss that. Sounds good. Quick. But some other examples um, would just be like if you like a protein, you could have like some salmon with some quinoa and veggies. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Not that this week. No. Okay. You can make lasagna with zucchini. Mm. Tempting. Stuffed peppers. Okay. <laughs> People listening to silence. Right. Uh, crickets. Um, stuffed sweet potato. I've been wanting to try that. Okay, that's a possibility. Um, yellow curry. Um, really, any type of curry. Again, with rice, serve it over cauliflower rice. So you could do yellow curry. You could do, we love tikka masala. Um, Not against yellow curry or tikka masala this week. Okay. Spring rolls. Pass. Okay. You could do a chow mein or garlic noodles with spaghetti squash. The last time you made garlic noodles was fire, so I'm not against that either. All right, we got some options. Just know after this, we're making a grocery list and going to determine what to have. Um, so, advice on just recipes. This is going to be like one of the last segments, so you went through a lot of them. Uh, but just, yeah, advice for just generally trying to substitute things to make them healthier. Um, kind of touching on what I had already said earlier on even if you're pumped, like I, I know, like when you're ready to start something, like the motivation is there, the energy is high, you're like, let's go, I'm gonna cut out everything. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, that will wear off, and then you will revert back to what you did. And that's, you're, you're better off just making small changes that are going to be sustainable. Um, so yes, I would say start off with your, your meal that you... I don't want to say that you least like but the meal that like you don't look forward to as much um so like if, if breakfast is your favorite meal i wouldn't start with modifying that one mm. because you're gonna you look forward to that one right start with lunch then start with something where it's like i usually am just eating to to get by to to you know get some energy to fill my stomach mm. um start with that one 
um, and just make a small change. Like I said, if you are normally eating something with white rice, switch to brown rice. If you're eating something with pasta, switch to a whole wheat pasta or a plant-based plant -based pasta. Um, a lot of places, if you, if you normally eat pizza, try cauliflower crust. Um, Blaze does have cauliflower crust. They do. Not as good, but it is an option. <laughs> but and again, <laughs> um, but again, it is. If you are looking for pizza, it is a great substitution. Are you good enough? Mm -hmm. um, cauliflower rice, right? If that's another thing. Like if you, a lot of places are like California Fish Grill. I love California Fish Grill. They now have cauliflower rice as an option. Um, so making those small substitutions. Just do it once so you can be like, oh, this isn't as bad as I thought. Right. And then you will be more likely to do it again. Um, so, yeah, start with whatever meal that you probably, I would say, don't look forward to as much. Mm -hmm. Start there and just make a small change. And then once you see the results from that, you will be motivated to do more. Um, so that's my, that's my advice. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Well, welcome back, Sinclair, the health nerd. Please keep on coming back because you know these folks are tired of listening to me. <laughs> uh, thank you all again for listening to the True Health Forever podcast where we try to live our best life through the lens of holistic health. I'm your host, Devon Javel, creator of Black Wall Street, the board game. And my name is Sinclair, a.k.a. The, the health, health nerd. nerd. We hope y'all stay healthy. We hope y'all stay mentally wealthy. And of course, we hope y'all stay, stay true. true.